Okay, I'm going to make a video for the Brew Nerds community on Google+. Plus. Um, I've never made an instructional video before, this is my first time, so uh, bear with me. I didn't uh, script this, rehearse, I didn't check the crap in my teeth or, you know, birds in the nose or anything. So here we go. Topic is HERMS. What is HERMS? HERMS is Heat Exchange Recirculating MASH System. So that's what the acronym stands for, so what does that mean? All it means is the mash ton and the mash inside the mash ton is getting its heat from an exchanger, from another heated device. Uh, my particular system uses the hot liquor tank as that heat exchanger. But uh, let's start with the components, the individual components of my arm system. Uh, standard hot liquor tank, there's not a whole lot that's unique or special about this. I'll point out the few things that are unique. Um, it has to have some kind of recirculating port, which is what you see here. Now, we'll get to the recirculation method here in a minute, but this is basically the way the wort goes back in to the mash tun after it exits the heat exchanger. Um, the other unique thing about this mash tun that might be different from yours or, or someone else who's not running a herm system is the temperature probe on the out of the mash tun. Now, what that does is it, it just tells you uh, it doesn't really control anything. All it does is it tells me where uh, the temperature's at, so I can monitor that. And I monitor that via, uh, I'm not sure how you can see it on the video, but via this um, digital display right here. It's a PID, uh, but don't, don't be fooled by the fact that PID it doesn't control anything. I just use it to monitor. Uh, that's the way that the electric brewery is set up. You can find out more about the electric brewery. Um, at Cal Walmer's website, theelectricbrewery.com. Great information. More, more information than you probably know what to do with. It's, it's a great site, and he's a good guy. So, the mash tun uh, is the first component. The second component is the heat exchanger. Um, it's also the hot liquor tank. So, the cool thing about that, well, there's a bunch of them. Let's just start with you're going to have to sparge your, your mash anyways. So, you're going to need a hot sparge in order to do that. The cool thing about this is that hot sparge water, or water being you know, getting ready to sparge your beer, is also keeping your heat exchanger at the proper temperature. So the way this one runs, it might be a little bit different from some of the ones I've seen other people run, is I'm constantly recirculating from my mash tun through my work pump right down here. I'm not sure how this will come in the video. This is a March pump mounted to this up right here. And then out of that March pump, and into here, now this is the bottom end of a 50 foot copper coil that is inside my hot liquor tank. Um, I chose to use copper for a number of reasons. It's, it's more flexible, it's easy to work with. Um, it conducts heat a little bit better, but to be honest, I think about any kind of coil you could use would do the job, considering it's 50 feet long and it's going through, it's totally submerged in hot water. So. Stainless, copper, whatever you prefer. Um, after it goes through that, in, in this, uh, this port, it goes through 50 feet of copper, and 50 feet is all submerged in water that I keep exactly at my mash temperature. And after being exposed, even if you lose you know, a little bit of temperature coming out here and go through the pump, through all the hoses, uh, by the time it gets through that 50 feet and comes back out here, it, it is at the temperature that I'm keeping this hot liquor tank at. So let me give you a peek. Again, I'm not sure how this is going to come up on the video. Peek what we have inside here. Now, see the copper cop coil and the heating element right here. Now that's how the mash and the hot liquor tank get, get the heat. There's no heating element or burner or anything else inside this hot liquor tank inside the mash tank. It all comes from right here. And it is controlled by this temperature probe right here. This temperature probe is monitored and controlled by this PID. Um, there's another unique thing about this, this particular hot liquor tank is it has, just like the Mashdown does, it has a turn port on it. So you can kind of see, hopefully, you can kind of see this uh, return port right here. Why that's important, why it needs a return port, because if you have to keep the water inside the heat exchanger 
in constant motion. If you don't, a heat layer will build up around the coil and you won't be able to control the temperature of your mash nearly as accurately as if the water is moving the entire time. So what I do is I use this water pump here to recirculate the hot air tank. So it comes out, goes in the, the, the water pump, comes out of the water pump, back in here, constantly keeps this in motion, and uh, also is monitored by this probe. And when it gets off by you know a degree, this, uh, this PID kicks in, heats the element, the element heats the water, water heats the coil, mash goes through the coil, heats the mash, and puts it back in there. Um, I actually have a great example of why you need to uh, keep this in constant motion, water in constant motion in here. I just brewed two days ago, which was Saturday, um, February 17th, no, sorry, February 16th, 2013. And, uh, my mash was not very responsive to temperature changes. So I was getting the temperatures generally that I wanted right here, but on the mash PID, it wasn't catching up. It was within a degree of my hot liquor tank, but uh, it wasn't responding quickly at all. It took a long time. Every time I made a temperature change in here, I did protein rest, and then I went up to sacrification, and then I went to mash out. It took a while during each step of that process for it to get where it was going. And then even then it lagged behind by a single degree. When I went to find the sparge, to, to mash out a sparge, what I do before I, I switch my hoses is I turn off both pumps and I, I shut all the valves. Um, after I turned off the pumps and I began to shut the valves, I realized I'd only turned off one pump, but I didn't have another pump running. And that's when it hit me that I didn't have my, my water recirculation pump running at any point during that process. So the water was sitting here stagnant, it was building up a heat shield, a heat layer around the, uh, the copper coil, <clears throat> and it wasn't controlling the temperature of the mash tun nearly as responsibly as it normally does. So let's go to the components one more time. Mash tun with false bottom, um, work pump to recirculate through the coil, the copper coil inside the heat exchanger, the PID to monitor the mash tun, the PID to control the temperature of the mash and the hot liquor tank, and the water pump that keeps the recirculation going inside, um, inside here, so there's no heat layer building up around that coil. Is there anything else important that I need to cover about a HERM system? before I cut this video short. My first ever educational video short. Thank you for your patience, by the way. Um, I don't think so. Oh, oh, well, yeah, one of the benefit to, um, to this particular system is once I am ready to mash out, what I do, instead of routing the sparge water directly into the mash tun, is run it. Instead of coming into the water pump and going back in here, it goes into the water pump and into the coil. So now you have 168, 170 degree water going into this coil. Then it goes through the coil and into the mash tun as sparge water. The great thing about this is the entire time you're sparging, you're also cleaning out the inside of your coil with 170 degree water. So um, I used to run a different system. There are different ways to set up perm systems. Um, I, always, I always have run my sparge water this way though. My last perm system was, uh, it's actually a three burner three-tiered herb system. It was just three-tiered because I had set it up on a brew tree. It didn't necessarily need to be because I had a pump. But uh, that one, all I did, I got my temperature in my mash to where I wanted it with a burner underneath the mash. And then I just maintained that temperature with the heat exchanger. Now this one has no dedicated heat in the mash tun whatsoever. It's completely heated by the elements in here. Um, and once the mash out is done, it goes over to the boil kettle, and the boil kettle is, is pretty standard. It, it, it's an electric boil kettle, so you know, there is a heating element inside there that does all my boiling for me. But other than that, um, there's, nothing, there's nothing else unique about this. Uh, I have a whirlpool port, but that doesn't really have anything to do with the Herm system. It's just, it's just a nice thing to have to, to leave true behind. Um, I choose to use a... Uh, Blickman Thermidator, I'm not sure if you can see that or not either. 
but I like to leave as much of the, the break material and, and hot matter behind in the kettle so I will cool hot before going out to this kettle. So um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out.